Okay, welcome to our seventh lecture. So today we are going to begin with the concept of uh, the concept behind static CMOS inverter switching characteristics. Okay. So the first thing that uh, we have to note is that whatever we have done until now, uh, that is essentially this. That's essentially the VTC or the voltage transfer characteristics. So what did the voltage transfer characteristics uh, give us the details? It was simply telling us like about the noise margin. So we have seen the noise margin concepts in the previous lecture. What did it tell us further? It also told us this is the noise margin. So basically this is the VOH, this is the VOL. <clears throat> this is the VIL, this is the VIH. This is zero, this is VD. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Now, what did it tell us more? In this uh, voltage transfer characteristics, it also told us like if we draw the line VI, VO equal to VI. Okay. Then, uh, the point at which both the NMOS and PMOS are saturated are essentially given by a line like that, which will be VO is equal to VI plus mod of VTP. And another line like that, which is parallel to this VO equal to VI, but the um, X intercept, Y intercepts are different. So it will be VO will be equal to VI minus VTM. Okay, and where is this part? This is essentially starting at the point where the switching begins. So this is your VTN. Got it? So now, what were the kind of, you know, uh, conclusions from these um, topics is that from zero to VTN, the NMOS was in uh, sub-threshold between VDD and somewhere here, let us say VDD minus VTP. This part, the PMOS, PFET was in sub -threshold. okay. Then you know the rest of the details, which I'm not going over, okay. Now, what we understand is if we want to switch this region, that means switch this transition region towards the left side or towards the right side, what we can do is uh, we can shift this switching uh, or the transition region towards the left or the right depending on the sizing of the transistor. Okay. So if we consider this particular point, which is essentially the midpoint of this characteristics, which we will call it as VM, capital M. Okay. So we shall call it like the midpoint of the characteristics. So uh, I'll call it as inverter threshold. This is the inverter threshold or the midpoint. I prefer to use the term midpoint, inverter midpoint, because uh, threshold I'll definitely use for the threshold voltage. Okay. So let's not confuse it. Okay. So at at VM, what is the situation? If you notice, it lies within this particular region, within these two boundaries, essentially meaning that both N and P are in saturation. Okay. So if P fed and N fed are both in saturation, I'll be using the same equations here. So beta N V O V N whole square will be equal to beta P V O V P whole square. I'm again ignoring the channel link modulation term. Okay. So that will become equal to beta n V O V n. So again, let's see. These are probably revision for you, but let's do it nonetheless. Okay. So beta n, uh, this is 
M N M P. This is M N. What is V O V N? V G S N. That is V I minus V T N whole square is equal to beta P. What is V O V P? V S G P. That is V D D minus V I minus mod of V T P whole square. Okay. Now we are speaking about the inverted threshold, so I will simply replace this V I by V M. Okay, so from there, what do we get? Very simple: beta n by beta p whole root therefore v m is equal to p d d minus mod of v t p plus this v t n term divided by 1 plus this minus v m will come to the left side so that becomes minus becomes plus plus root over this very simple derivation but this one is having some immense consequences as we will see in the uh, few, uh, I mean in the future what happens is when we are making like you might be thinking like what is the big deal about it so first thing is that what is the engineering application of this threshold voltage understand uh, threshold sorry not threshold voltage, inverted threshold I'm so sorry okay so what we will try to do is for symmetric operation for a perfectly symmetric operation what would you like to have well you would prefer to have equal uh, high and low value so this i will prefer to have this vm exactly middle between 0 to vdd on both vi and vo axis okay so that means vm is equal to vdd by 2 so if you put vdd by 2 over here what do you expect? This clearly, if you notice, um, you would like to have this root over beta n by beta p should be equal to 1. This implies beta n equal to beta p. And what is the second uh, thing that you would like to have? This mod of beta p and this one should be the same okay so that they will cancel each other and we have seen beta n equal to beta p what does it imply simply this so in our previous lecture on noise margin we had noticed that if we want to maximize the noise margin what was the condition if you notice over there also we reached this condition this one and this one so in the interview if somebody asks you why is it necessary to size the transistors okay then your answer should be twofold number one it will maximize the noise margin number two it is also going to make symmetric operation okay as a consequence you can see that the sizing part which is represented by beta n equal to beta p and this fabrication part the technology part where we, uh, the threshold voltage of the n fet should be equal to the thresh mod of the threshold voltage of the p fet these two conditions will essentially ensure perfectly symmetric operation at the same time it is going to maximize the noise margin as well okay so this is called the inverter threshold this is already known to you now <clears throat> first of all notice for the noise margin analysis for the inverter threshold for this vtc voltage transfer characteristics vi and vo notice that we did not bother about the capacitor here and the capacitance term was not even there some anywhere because in the very first 
lecture on this topic, I had mentioned that this is essentially the DC characteristics. That means whenever we are uh, DC characteristics, essentially, why am I writing DC characteristics here? Because this is independent of the time of operation. Okay, this is independent of the capacitances involved. This is independent of the rate at which the switching is happening. Okay, so that means this VI, if you slowly increase, then you are going to observe these characteristics and essentially you get so much of analysis details. Okay, and as a consequence, we never bothered about the load capacitance which you are supposed to put at the output. Okay, so for the first time, in this course, we are going to start bothering about the capacitance at the output load. Okay, so this capacitance, I'll put it as CL, the load capacitance. Now, let us understand this a uh, uh, little bit uh, kind of in depth. Notice. Did I tell you the uh, concept of open uh, no load concepts? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So what we have noticed is if we remove this, this CL is essentially equal to zero, such that the total capa uh, capacitance which you are seeing from the output node here will be equal to C out is equal to load capacitance because these are all in parallel plus all the C parasitics, right? So CL will be zero when you are not putting this. So for the no load condition, this is, corresponds to the best performance. Okay, this is an ideal best or ideal performance. Ideally, I shouldn't call it ideal because in ideal condition, C parameters, uh, C parasitics are also very low. Okay, so it's a best performance, let us say like that. Okay, so the minimum output capacitance that you can get with CL equal to zero. So that means that is a no load. It is something similar to the situation in case of uh, our analog circuits where you are going to have a resistive load. Okay, in that case, you are going to have RD and RL in parallel. So over there, what is the R out? RD parallel RL. Okay. Now, usually what happens is RD is definitely lower than RL. Okay. So, uh, if it is a parallel combination, remember that R out will always be lower than the lowest of the two combinations. Okay. So, but if R out is lower, then what is the value of the gain minus GM into RD parallel RL? So simply I'll put R out. So our target should be that R out should, if R out is large, then the gain would be large. Don't worry about this minus. This minus is happening because of the CS configuration. Since it is common source, you are essentially getting a 180 degree phase shift. That's the reason why there is a minus sign. It's nothing to do with the magnitude of it. Okay. All right. So this GM into R out. So uh, if R out output resistance is high, you are going to have a higher gain. But the problem is if RL is kind of low or closer to RD, what will happen? Your R out will be half of RD, RD by two. If RL is equal to RD. On the contrary, if RD if RL is much, much larger than R, RD, the way I have written over here, then parallel combination with this will roughly be equal to RD only, which is the maximum R out which you can get in this particular configuration. So essentially meaning that if I can put RL equal to infinity, then that is again sort of the no load condition for analog. Okay, so that also includes the best performance. Best performance in the sense Best, I'll not call it uh, performance, let's say best gain. Got it? So the no load situations are the best scenario 
for both analog and digital. The only thing is that in analog, no load corresponds to no load resistance. That is RL will be infinity. Okay. If it is a no load case for digital, the load capacitor will be zero. In both the cases, this load, no load condition corresponds to the best case scenario. Okay. So whenever you want to report anything concerning the switching characteristics in digital, whenever you want to report the, uh, let us say the gain bandwidth product or the bandwidth, it's not the gain bandwidth product, only the bandwidth or the gain, let us say the gain of the uh, amplifier, then no load you can of course report, but especially the bandwidth, you have to always specify with respect to the load you have considered, okay? So many of uh, the papers I have seen, people will be saying that, okay, the best, uh, this inverter is operating at this frequency. If you write like that in the exams, I will cut and give zero because you have not specified the load. Okay, so be technically correct. As we will see later on, this load is going to determine which frequency, which is the maximum frequency this inverter is going to work this rl will determine what is the maximum bandwidth of this per, uh, particular amplifier okay so um, please be kind of you know, technically correct in your statements <clears throat> and in fact in the interviews whenever you answer like this with the perfect precision you really impress the people who are there to hire you and your selection process becomes easy. You will almost invariably get a job when you specify these minor, minor details, technical details. And the difference in, uh, I mean, you will often notice that uh, some of your friends, they will say, I answered the same thing. I told that uh, the maximum frequency was this, I calculated correctly, but still I am not selected. My friend got selected. If you probe nicely, you will find your friend who got selected, he mentioned the load. Okay, sir, this is going to have a frequency of one gigahertz provided only under no load condition. So if I increase the CL to say 10 femtofarad, then the uh, frequency will reduce, the bandwidth will become like this. He will definitely get the job. And the one of you who will say, sir, the bandwidth is one gigahertz, you will never get the job. Okay, so please, I'm telling you, uh, just pay attention to this uh, finer details. Okay, now let us proceed. So now that we have understood the importance of the load, what I shall do is, I'll consider the total output capacitance for this. So that means CO will be equal to CL plus C parasitics. The parasitic capacitance will be a topic uh, of one of the, some of the lectures later on. So as of now, we will just consider that the capacitance which you are able to see from the output node is CO equal to C out. Okay, that's what CO will be equal to CL plus internal capacitance plus parasitic capacitance. Okay. So this is what I had explained. RL equal to infinity is no load for analog. CO is equal to zero for uh, digital. Okay, now, Another very important thing I wanted to explain. <clears throat> Whenever you are having uh, an inverter and we want to study the switching performance of this inverter, okay, switching characteristics. Uh, <clears throat> I'm telling you switching characteristics, not the voltage transfer characteristics. Voltage transfer characteristics is VTC. This is the VTC. DC, DC characteristic. Now we shouldn't call it AC per se, because this is not a sinusoidal signal. This is a square pulse in digital. So over here, uh, what is the time varying uh, thing if you want to do? The first thing that you have to include is the load, as I said. And from here, I will consider only the CO. Okay, this is CL, this is a CO. CO is com sum of CL plus internal capacitance plus the parasitics, everything inclusive. Okay, this much also done. 
Now, based on your VLSI design course, I want to ask you, what are the assumptions? Very, very important thing. Again, if you can tell the assumptions in your interview panel, straight away you get the job. Assumptions for switching analysis. Please open up your microphones and start answering. What are the various assumptions you take when you are dealing with the inverter switching characteristics? <coughs> Sir, equal current. Uh, equal current. Equal current between what? M P and M N. Sir, P and N. Yeah. Huh. Same current. Uh, Finite rise and fall. Equal resistance between. Uh, the uh, let me answer. Equal current. See, um, it's not going to be equal current at all because you know uh, when the switching is happening, some amount of current will anyway be flowing through CL. Yes or no? Okay. And when it is discharging, some current will be. So basically, since we are dealing with the switching characteristics, the current between MP and MN will never be equal. You know, one of them will always exceed. So let us understand that this is your charging current. I'll call it uh, ICH. Now one of you just said no equal current. So that means I will suggest I will think that okay, this is the discharging path. If I charge equal to I discharge, then CL will never have any charge at all now. And when we are speaking about switching, so that means what it, what we are essentially looking at that means the output VO is essentially going from, let us say, 0 to VDD. That means up is output capacitance score, load capacitance score, charge up current. Correct. So we are speaking about what is this 0 to VDD output node? That is a pull up. Okay. So when you are discharging it, so VO will be equal to VDD all the way to 0. So that is pull down. Yes or no? So in the pull up switching and pull down switching, if the I ICH equal to I discharge, charge ending and discharging currents are equal, as you said, the current through the P MOSFET should be equal to the current through the N MOSFET. Then basically, aapka ye capacitance ka bhi charge hoga hi nahi, kyunki essentially meaning that charging and discharging current are equal means there is no charge which is going in or coming out of the capacitance. So that means the output voltage across the CL will never change and only. And a very yes. So uh, I always appreciate that you ask a question which may be wrong. You make a statement which may be wrong, but I'm telling you, once I explain, it will become very, very clear to you. You will never make that mistake. It is better to make a mistake in the class and learn rather than make a mistake at the interview panel and don't get a job. I really appreciate whoever asked that question. Okay, so what was the second uh, uh, statement somebody made? Symmetric operation. Dusre kisne bataya mujhe? Finite rise and fall time. Uh, well, that is not the assumption actually. That is a condition which we will actually derive later. So, for example, humne bataya na ki for symmetric operation, what is the condition? So, that's why we basically came up with the concept of this inverter threshold, inverter midpoint. And from there, we say that, okay, for a perfectly symmetric operation, VM has to be exactly VDD by 2. What is the condition? Hai? These are the conditions. So this is one condition. This is another condition. I can actually write this is the conditions for, I'll write it here. Conditions for a perfectly symmetric operation. We are also going to do that when we will do the analysis, then we will see like what is the condition for perfectly uh, equal rise and fall time. But that is the condition. Assumption kya? Sir, constant supply. Ah, now you are getting to the track. Constant supply, uh, that means this is of course uh, VDD, that is a DC supply anyway. But can you think about little bit more? 
constant supply in terms of what the voltage value ये तो डीसी सप्लाई है ही इनिशियली ऑल्सो वी इन वन ऑफ आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई टोल्ड ना दिस इज बेसिकली अ बैटरी तो डीसी सप्लाई तो होना ही है वट इज द एजम्पन इन रेस्पेक्ट टू वी आई दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट this gives rise to a very very important topic which will be probably the first question of everyone's vlsi related industry uh, um, interviews vi ke liye kya condition hoga so frequency यहाँ पर फ्रीक्वेंसी कहा है भाई सरिट सोड बिटवीन जीरो टू वी डी हाँ सॉरी सरिट सोड बिटवीन जीरो टू वी डी नो दैट इज ऑल्सो देखो वी आई अगेन दिस इज अन्सेप्ट टू बी क्लियर दिस वी आई इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी द फुल रेल टू रेल वैल्यू ठीक है हाँ सॉरी वन ट्रांसिस्टर इज इन सैचुरेशन एंड अदर वन इज इन लीनियर वन स्विच no that will also vary with the value of vo that analysis we will do today itself i don't know if if we can have the time uh, we have done it here see at a particular instant one of them will be linear after that but before that particular instant other one will be in saturation so within the switching itself the transistors will go from one linear to saturation one will go it will but none of them will go into sub threshold by the way theek hai na Sub threshold means basically switching is over, as you can see. So from between here and here, obviously, if it is switching, one of them will be in linear. The uh, then both saturation. Okay. So, okay, I'll explain. Whenever we are, the condition on assumption on the VI is with respect with is with respect to time. Okay. because the whenever we are doing the switching analysis first of all we did the dc analysis that is the vtc wahan par time ka koi concept nahi tha this was vi was voltage vo was also voltage that's why we are essentially in this figure we are essentially considering the gain of the transistor uh, of the inverter vo by vi nikal rahe the hai na so in this case but remember that minus 1 kahan se aaya tha gain se aaya tha this vm is vo equal to vi that means this is the unity gain line that means at this point dvo dvi is equal to how much 1 okay so this is uh, the unity gain line okay now the here i am essentially going to speak about this kind of a characteristics where the x axis is time let us say in microsecond nanosecond in modern technology it will be in nanosecond okay so here will be vo it can also be vi in volts now hamesha uh, all the all the textbooks and all they will actually show this kind of a characteristics okay but this is the red line meaning this is the vo but the blue line is essentially something like this okay so what is the blue line blue is the vi and then when the vi uh, becomes from 1 to 0 then what this is an inverter output right so when it is becoming 1 to 0 it is start it will start going like that this is the vo correct now can anybody tell me what is the assumption with respect to vi no rise time and voltage see zero zero rise time and voltage exactly so that means for the first time we are uh, the first assumption is that vi is instantaneous
वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड कि वी को हम ऐसे नहीं सोच रहे हैं कि वेल इंस्टेड ऑफ दिस वी आई इज ऑल्सो राइजिंग लाइक दैट वी आई इज डिक्रीजिंग लाइक दैट नो वॉट डू वी कंसिडर वी आई इज इंस्टेंटेनियस नंबर वन सेकेंड थिंग सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट वेन वी आई इज इंस्टेंटेनियस ओके सो दैट मीन्स इफ इट स्टार्ट एट एट एन इंस्टेंट कॉल टी जीरो एट टी जीरो इट सेल्फ वी आई विल गो फ्रॉम जीरो टू वी डी एक्स दिस इज वी डी जीरो टू वी डी इंस्टेंटेनियसली ओके वी आई इज इंस्टेंटेनियस वट इज द सेकेंड एग्जाम्पन कौन बताएगा maybe in terms of capacitances like internal capacitances dekho wo bhi time ke hisab se dekho ye aisa nahi hai ki that means vi came at a time t0 here then after some time after a delay only vo will start decreasing correct so that means vo response to vi stimulus is instantaneous is baat ko samjho once you understand then i will tell you ki how to deal with these problems altogether okay and number 3 given following number 1 and 2 assumptions following assumptions one and two no sta required this is the most important part sta matlab static timing analysis now notice something very important over here ki if this was the case let us say number 2 that means vo response to vi stimulus is not instantaneous it is having a delay okay isko hum static time analysis ke terms mein kya kehte hain clock to queue delay is mm. a data to queue delay Uh, data to queue delay ex uh, exactly that is one aspect isko hum uh, setup and hold time ke hisab se kya kahenge how was setup time hold time have you studied that in vlsi yes, ha ab batao isme setup time hold time kya hoga well, how do you define setup time in so input should be at least earlier exactly yahi to ho raha hai जस्ट डोंट थिंक ये स्टैटिक टाइमिंग एनालिस जब पढ़ाएंगे तभी आप उसको सोचोगे दिस इज द एग्जैक्ट वट इज है इनपुट शुड बी एटलीस्ट अर्लियर देन द एडवेंट ऑफ द आउटपुट सो दैट मीन्स वट यू सी दिस इज बेसिकली द सेटअप टाइम ठीक है और इन दिस केस इसेंशियली क्या हो रहा है कि Uh, अब इसको मैक्सिम uh, डिले अगर करना चाहते हैं वी विल लुक इन टू दिस इन वे मोर डिटेल्स इन वी डील विद स्टैटिक टाइमिंग एनालिसिस लेटर ऑन इन दिस कोर्स नाउ नोटिस इफ आई वांट टू इंप्रूव द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ ऑपरेशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर इन्वर्टर हम क्या कर सकते हैं आई विल स्विच इट वेरी वेरी फास्ट सपोज आई एम स्विचिंग इट लाइक दिस वट विल है it is going to be a violation right because we know that this is the minimum delay necessary for the output to respond to the input jaise maine kaha vo response to vi stimulus is instantaneous suppose instantaneous nahi hai the way i am showing it this is the delay between the response in that case agar if i am trying to switch it faster than this uh, delay what will happen whole time violation exactly this is the typical case of whole time variation uh, violation got it everyone 
so what we have to do whole time hum how we do, how do we define whole time the input should at least remain high like this uh, this is the whole time violation to avoid to avoid whole time violation understood now the point is if we are ensuring that sorry if we are ensuring that this is instantaneous koi bhi kitab i mean most of the textbooks and all they don't describe it like this i do not know why at least you are learning from me so now you realize for the first time that this switching analysis is valid whatever theory we are going to learn all this analysis ha huh? these analysis are valid if and only if the vo response is instantaneous to the vi stimulus only then no static timing analysis will be required okay but i am also i am also going to put at the, as a disclaimer here that this is this is simply simplifying our analysis that's it okay whereas when we are doing uh, the static timing analysis we will i mean everyone now also you can understand you will appreciate that this perfect instantaneous thing is never possible in in nature in reality in practice okay so what will happen you always you will be having the static timing analysis so almost 80% of the job description which you will be having in after your during your placement time in the interviews those job description will include this static timing an analysis verification design engineer or uh, i mean design and verification engineer and all that you can ask your seniors i will essentially arrange for uh, one presentation by your seniors who are currently working in industry they will discuss about all these things to you okay so what are the things they are actually doing in industry so that uh, from now onwards you are going to train yourself better for your job in industry all right yeah so this static timing analysis we will be doing in our course itself uh, but later on uh, i am planning that this time we will be using some professional tools okay um in cadence uh where we are essentially going to learn about the static timing analysis uh using professional tools like cadence and all that okay not just mathematics and theory so these are the assumptions which i wrote essentially vi is instantaneous vo response immediately with vi change and no static timing analysis is necessary or involved sir like yes. vi is instantaneous means like even the setup time is also zero Can no, 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 no. For idea. example, this can also happen like this. If it is not instant, instantaneous means it is abrupt, basically. Instantaneous means with respect to time scale, it is abrupt. If it is like that, then you have to again consider only the midpoint, and then this is going to be your, uh, let us say, the whole time violation, right? now what i have to um, explain you will notice that when we were dealing with the tpd that is propagation delay time yaad hai vlsi design mein ha huh? so over there you will notice that you had considered vdd by 2 as the point right hello so why did you consider the time instances where the output is crossing vdd by 2 input is crossing vdd by 2 because that definition will help you even in the case when you are not having an instantaneous variation but anyway vi instantaneous ho ya na ho output is definitely not going to be instantaneous right so that output if it is instantaneous then this entire switching analysis is basically makes no sense yes or no so that is the reason why we will consider vdd by 2 so that is vi becoming instantaneous means we have got at least one less botheration ki where to find out vdd by 2 for the vi 
okay so instantaneous which is abrupt with respect to time t that's all okay very nice so these are the fundamental assumptions for the switching analysis okay now so the first thing is that when vi is equal to vdd okay so when vi is equal to vdd as i said you don't have to bother about the variation between 0 to vdd 0 se vdd tak ja raha hai aise sochne ki koi zarurat nahi hai when vi is equal to vdd straight off because as i said vi is instantaneous theek hai yahan par agar dekha jaye so this is vi vi aisa hai sorry exactly like that theek hai when vi is instantaneous you are going to have vi is equal to vdd then look at this this is vdd this is vdd so what is the value of vsgp if you notice vsgp is zero vsgp vs is here g is here this is vdd this is so vsgp is zero which is less than mod of vtp so the mp is switched off so your circuit is basically like that switched off in the sense mp is sub threshold so the amount of current which is flowing through the p fet is only the sub threshold leakages we are going to ignore that so now vo vi and co okay okay now notice that initially vi is equal to vdd so this is vdd here so what is the value of vgsn vgsn uh, is going to be vdd always okay but what is the value of vdsn notice that output was initially how much vdd right here so if I show it in this case, so VO is essentially going from VDD to zero. So initially VO was VDD, VI is always VDD during the entire switching. Okay. So what is the value of VG, VDSN? This VDSN will be simply, initially VDSN will be VDD. Gradually, it will be going towards zero, of course, but initially, for the first few uh, nanoseconds, let us say, VDSN will be VDD, whereas VGSN is always VDD. Therefore, VDSN is always greater than VDSN is how much? VDD. What is VGSN? VDD minus zero. Minus VTN. Since VDSN is greater than VOV, obviously MN, that is the N MOSFET, is in saturation. Okay, so that means in the transition, when it is transitioning from VDD to the zero part, okay, pull down ki baat kar raun, it is going to begin with the N MOSFET being in saturation. Okay. So if it is in saturation, I'll just use the saturation current. That is beta n by 2 ko hata deta hai. Uh, VGSN minus VTN whole square minus this. Because I'll be choosing beta n is equal to Okay. So this 2 is not here. So beta n by minus beta n by co vgsn ke badla mein vdd minus vtn whole square 0 to t yes. remember there is no time variant part time variant term in this uh, factor so we have kept it outside this integral okay so what do we get vo as a function of time t will be equal to this will be minus vdd na? so vdd will be on the right side vdd minus beta and t by this 
okay now when does this mn go into linear region from saturation like one of you had just said right uh, the assumption should be both of them to be in the saturation or linear one of them linear one this yes ye koi uh, it's not an assumption it has to be okay so this tv instance okay i have written that here instance for the linear saturation boundary so when does mn go into mn is in fact go into the linear such region from saturation so initially it has begun with the saturation region now when is the instance when it will go into the linear region operation when vdsn will be equal to vovn that is the vgsn minus vtn vdsn kya hai pata hai vo simply vo will be equal to vgsn kya hai vi that is vgd minus vtn at this instance for linear saturation boundary theek hai all i am going to do is vdd minus vtn ko yahan par bitha denge in this relation so vot ke badle mein i'll put vdd minus vtn vdd vd cancels minus minus cancels and from there tv will be equal to okay this two will be missing here two won't be here no so tb will be equal to co vtn divided by beta n vdd minus vtn whole square this is the instance for linear saturation boundary so in this uh, i didn't draw it in this instance what do we understand is let us say if this is your to plus tb that means this is your tb here then after this point n fat goes into linear okay all right so after this what is going to happen after t equal to tb instance mn is in linear region ठीक है, so if M N is in linear, all I'm going to do. Uh, by the way, again there is an assumption here. Who can tell me? बोलो बोलो notice that i actually yahan par nahi hoga i mentioned that in the vtc where is ha huh, vtc mein where is the part when mn becomes linear remember everything higher than this vo equal to vi minus vtn everything above is what mn is saturated that means when mn becomes from comes from saturation to linear that means is point pe okay so when it is essentially going out of the saturation region so this is the mn linear part hmm? in this case what is the situation with mp hello mp will be saturated right mp will be saturated everything below this upper line mp is saturated here so in this case in this equation jo hum nikal rahe hain yahan par what is the assumption Yes or no? You will notice that this 
uh, minus CO DVO DT, this is the total discharging current from the capacitor. That is the reason why it is essentially the output is essentially going to VDD to zero. Okay. In this entire transition, we have not included any IP over here, IS, let us say. But the P MOSFET ka koi current humne include kya hi nahi hai. Even though we know that uh, your, as we have seen over here, at the linear saturation boundary, MP is going to be in saturation, but we have not taken care of that. Yes or no? <laughs> okay. So when you are doing the calculations, whenever understanding the subject, please keep your, please remain awake. Please remain aware. Okay. Ki kya kya ho rahe. Okay. So MP is essentially going to be in the saturation region, but it is going to be conduct, uh, but we are supposing that MP is not going to conduct throughout the transition. Okay. Okay. But in that case, you might ask that how is it even uh, then does it mean that this formula is all on? Huh, tell me. Green is VDD, so it will be like sub threshold, right? Like why again? We are essentially, huh? So what we are suggesting is that we have kept it completely at VDD every time throughout the entire transition. So MP will always be switched off. But in this case, we are essentially showing that VI is going from zero to VDD. So the difference between this VTC and the switching is basically we are always triggering this particular part. Correct. So essentially meaning that uh, if VI is always equal to VDD, then the MP linear MP saturation, this, I mean, you are always going to have In this case, we will always assume that since VDD and VDD is there, so basically MP is always going to be in saturation in sub threshold. Okay, but remember that we are always assuming that no matter what happens, MP is not conducting throughout the transition. There will be leakages also, that leakage term is also missing here. Okay, fine. Sir, can we say uh, ideal VTC or uh, ideal VTC v is actually you should call it like um, it will be exactly a VDD by two. That is the ideal one for when when these two conditions are met, you are going to have the ideal VTC, ideal noise margin, ideal symmetric operation. But it doesn't speak, I mean, when VI is equal to VDD. Uh, so what we are trying to do is that we are trying to find out key, if in case we are fixing the VI at VDD, then how, how will the transition from VDD to zero will occur thanks to the capacitances? Okay, Dekho par capacitance ka hai. in all these relations, there is a big nice CO everywhere. Okay. So uh, for the first time we are seeing in this course that how capacitance is creeping its way inside the characteristics and this capacitance will essentially make sure of all the analysis that we know the propagation delay transition delay mm. all the delays will essentially come because of that. Okay. Then uh, so once we have said that, okay, we are assuming that no matter what happens, there is no leakage uh, at through the PFET. There is no uh, PFET is not conducting anywhere throughout the transition. Only then we will simply put the uh, linear current equation for the MN. Okay. So what we can do is I'll erase this. Hmm. And then... Uh, Okay, so once we have that, then you do the, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll essentially do this calculation in the next, next class maybe. Okay. 
so so what are the take home messages today what are the things we have learned number 1 the concept of the inverted threshold why do we need inverted threshold because that will help us in the symmetric operation now one very important thing to note is that uh, i mean let me ask you only when we say vm equal to vdd by 2 we say that it is a perfectly symmetric operation does it always happen for uh, let us say two input nand gate sir if it can be modeled into a inverter yes form, then it can yes excellent so now we understand is that this midpoint concept inverter threshold concept will be important if and only if you can convert any combinational circuit into its equivalent inverter yaad hai in a couple of lectures earlier i had mentioned the importance of equivalent inverter equivalent inverter mein agar aap convert karoge then this theory is applicable and that will essentially ensure perfectly symmetric operation for two input nand gate also okay and in that case you will notice that if you are putting vdd by 2 over here then your beta n will not be equal to beta p it is going to be something different we will look into those sizing issues when we do for the nand gate and all that later so that was the first thing that we learned second thing we learned today is the importance of the loading concept no load kise kehte hain okay i wrote it here also the concept of no load in analog ics as well as in digital ics okay so after that what we understood is very important concept of the fundamental assumptions for the switching characteristics switching analysis rather okay and after that what we did we have essentially we went into understanding i mean we began with the derivation so the first of all we understood that the uh, nfet will be in the saturation region so we de developed that model and then we figured that after a time tb which is the instance for the linear saturation boundary then mn goes into linear then linear derivation we will finish it up tomorrow i mean in the next class on tuesday and then we will try to find out the different timing constraints of the switching okay thank you all of you that's all for today excuse me sir yeah yeah uh, sir here we are taking v not equal to vdd uh, mm -hmm. it will sir uh, uh, output resistance